that's fine. But again, just use the slider that's down here. For those of you that want to try to go ahead and convert that to stereo, I'm going to go ahead and select all these clips off the timeline. You have to make sure there's no clips that you'll be converting um, back to stereo on the timeline. And I'm going to select these clips here and just go under Clip audio options, source channel mapping. I'm just gonna tell it that I want all mono tracks to be stereo. Click OK, and now you'll notice when I drag these down here, they come up as stereo left and right. So you can leave it as mono, or if you need to match it with another camera or something like that that happens to be stereo, then you can go ahead and convert it to stereo. So source channel mappings can be very handy for that. Let's go ahead and add a quick title. So you're gonna go title, new title, default still. I'm gonna go ahead and just use the color picker to, uh, to pick some colors here, sort of match that out. And then just put your title over top of your area and you're all set. And you'll notice it plays in real time. A lot of cameras that just use SD cards, like the Kodak camera, uh, will just come up either as an untitled volume or as the Mac uh, calls it here, no name. If you click on it, you'll notice that you get the same DCM folder. You double click on that and you've got some video here. I went ahead and just transferred this into another folder. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just double click on one of these MOV files here. And you'll notice that there are MOVs on the Kodak camera. On some other cameras, you might notice there are AVIs or other formats. So again, we'll, we'll go ahead and identify the best possible editing mode uh, for this particular uh, camera. I'm going to double click on this. Um, at this point, I might want to go back in and right mouse click go to properties and see what uh, type of movie this is now the kodak camera shoots in 1080p and 720p so it's got multiple shooting formats so again it's going to be critical to know what size preset to set up so again 720 at 2997 so a little bit different than what we had um, with the flip camera and again your camera even pocket cameras uh, will shoot in different formats and some of them in fact may not even be HD but you can still use the same methodology so I'm gonna go ahead and just go to file new sequence I'm gonna go ahead and just use a, a preset that's already created and again the XDCAM EX 720 is a great format so I'm gonna go ahead and use the same one that we had you can go in and customize this by just going under the generals tab and you can go ahead and set up and, and make different uh, different changes. You'll find out that our XDCAM EX preset uses an iframe uh, previewer when you're just previewing your videos on the timeline. And it actually works very smooth with most of these formats. And you can go ahead and make whatever changes you want. So I'm going to go ahead and just call this Kodak and click OK. And I'm going to drag some of these clips directly to the timeline stretch them out and you'll notice you're getting a yellow line here instead of on the flip video where we didn't have uh, any line uh, on the video of course this is where my title is um, but without any effects or titles you'll notice there's there's no red line that's because the clip here matches the sequence settings perfectly it means the size is right that the sound and the frame rate is 100 percent correct on the kodak it's basically yellow lining here because it's saying, okay, first of all, you have an MOV. It's 720p. That's fine. So I, uh, the yellow line means I can play that real time. And it's also noting that the timeline uh, preset is set up for 30p, 30 frames a second, whereas we already know that the clips here are set up for 2997. In this particular case, it's not a big deal. Um, so Kodak users, I would just tell you to go ahead and use the 720p setting. And again, you can just go ahead and edit this exactly the same way uh, that I did before. Uh, it plays smoothly. You'll get a nice, uh, nice frame rate. You'll get a nice uh, export as well. So talking about export, what's the fastest way? Once I've edited my video, what's the fastest way to get this uh, back out online? So you can just go to File export media 
and I would go right over here and choose H264. And from here, you can choose to put it on your iPod uh, or iPhone, which is uh, the presets iPod video large, typically, Apple TV. Uh, for most online viewing and high quality, I always recommend YouTube widescreen HD. It's an excellent universal format. So you're just going to go ahead and select that. Uh, tell it where you want to put it. Click OK. It's now going to go ahead and launch Adobe Media Encoder, and you can just go ahead and queue up uh, as many of those as you want. So while it's loading uh, Adobe Media Encoder, I can go ahead and uh, make a second preset, and maybe I want to make one for a portable device like my phone. So I'll go down and just uh, do one for iPod Video uh, Large on my phone, and I'll just call it iPhone version and click OK. And here's the Adobe Media Encoder, one for the YouTube and one for my iPhone. Go ahead and click on Start Queue. And you'll notice Adobe Media Encoder is now finished. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at those on the desktop. I see my two files here. I can just go ahead and click on my YouTube version. And that plays back really smooth and looks great. My iPhone version. And again, it looks great. So real simple editing, fast, get it off of the camera, load it into Premiere Pro, and get it right back on the web or on another device. And that's a quick look at Premiere Pro CS4 editing pocket cameras, or what I call pocket USB cameras. Again, really flexible, a great workflow, tons of great uses uh, for these little pocket cameras. And when you just need a quick way to edit these things, there's no better choice than Premiere Pro CS4. Thanks.